Hey everyone, welcome to Green Monk TV. I'm here in Newtown Square at SAP headquarters, and I'm with... Jim Dodd. Jim, you are? The facilities manager for the campus. Okay, now we're standing on a... Re well, we're, we're in the new head, the new building in, new, in, in new Newtown Square. The new headquarters building, right. Okay, and can, what can you tell me about the floor that we're standing on? Um, in, in comparison to the floor in the, in the headquarters old building, where we used marble that was imported from Italy, um, what we wanted to do was was to reduce that cost and do a sustainable floor. And so this floor is a concrete floor, um, and it has a mixture of, uh, of uh, seashells and glass in it on a terrazzo finish. Um, and, and then we polished it and honed it up so it would be nice and shiny. But it's considerably less expensive, obviously, than the marble floor in the main building. Um, and we, uh, we use it in the um, atrium area. Um, in a radiant floor, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but it's a less expensive uh, uh, solution, and yet it's a very attractive um, solution in terms of the flooring for both the, the, uh, the link to the new building and the atrium that runs the full length of the, of the floor downstairs um, on, the, uh, on the promenade. So, Jim, tell me yes. about the floor. Okay, in the promenade area below us here is a radiant floor. Um, we have pipes that run through that floor and we have 10 geothermal wells that are drilled in the back of our property. And we take the water out of the ground where it comes as a constant temperature and we pump it through the piping on the, on the concrete floor downstairs and the floor radiates heat or air conditioning depending on what time of year it is. And it helps to keep this big atrium very comfortable um, without having to use large amounts of air conditioning or heating. Um, and um, so it's just using natural heat it, it, or cooling it, it, from the from, from the, the from the earth. From the earth. That's correct. Yes. So the water usually comes out about 55 degrees out of the ground, and we can pump that through the floor, and that cools the concrete and radiates coolness in the summertime. And then in the wintertime, all we got to do is heat that water up to about 72 degrees, and then we pump that through the floor, and it heats the concrete, and it radiates heat off the floor. And because it's on the floor, it affects the employees immediately, and it, and, and it keeps the atrium very, very, very comfortable. Okay, and you've got these nice banisters. Yes, uh, uh, it, it's an interesting situation here. When the original site survey was done for this building, it would have wiped out a grove of mature Chinese chestnut trees um, that are absolutely beautiful and, and, and are a part of the aesthetics of the campus. So we moved the building in order to save half of those chestnut trees but the chestnut trees that we did have to harvest in order to put the building here, we had them milled into, into uh, handrails for the whole building. About 90% of what's in this building to construct it was sourced locally within 500 miles of the building. And that's a sustainability feature. Again, it provides points on the lead scale um, because it cuts down on your carbon output because you're not exporting things from thousands and thousands of miles away. Okay. So Jim, tell me about the underfloor. Yeah, the, uh, the difference, the primary difference between the original building and the new building is in the original building, the air distribution comes down from the ceiling plenum. And of course, that's not very efficient because heat rises. So if you're trying to get heat down to where the people sit, it's not a very efficient approach. In this building, we use an underground distribu uh, underfloor distribution where the air comes up through the floor um, and c is controlled um, in each location with a vent. So people can control the amount of air coming in their space. And by coming up from the floor, the treated air gets to the employee immediately and there's an immediate reaction to that, to that temperature adjustment. Um, in the other building, of course, the, the hot air comes down, but it turns around and goes right back up. So it's not as efficient as this underfloor system is in this building here. We have a wood feature in each of our hallways that separate the neighborhoods and it's made from bamboo. Again, a sustainable wood that's renewable every seven years in comparison to oak or walnut or some other wood that takes 40 or 50 years to mature. We decided to use bamboo in this building because it's sustainable. So tell me about the carpet. So the carpet, in most instances when you install large amounts of carpet, there's volatile organic chemicals in the carpet like formaldehyde that require you to aerate the building for a period of time before you can occupy it. We work with the manufacturer of this particular carpet to reduce or eliminate the VOCs in it. Okay. So we did, not have to, we did not have to ventilate the building for a period of time prior to occupancy. And it makes for a cleaner environment for the employees overall without the organic chemicals off-gassing from the carpet. So what have we got beside us here, Jim? This is a, uh, a uh, filtered water system that we put in. A number of years ago, we used to provide bottled water for the employees. 
and then we realized how much plastic waste was being generated. And even though it was being recycled, we decided to eliminate bottled water from the campus. Um, and we installed one of these in a way of water systems in each of our pantries. It's filtered um, and it also cools the water and heats the water. So if you want to make tea, you can get hot water. And if you want cold water, you can get cold water. But it reduced our cost by over $120,000 on bottled water. Um, and it got rid of the plastic issue. So Jim, where are we now? We're in the chiller room of the new building, of the Platinum Lead building. And what we do that's unique in this building in comparison to other buildings is we actually make ice at night and store it in these very big tanks behind me. Um, and we use uh, the, the, the system because at night the electricity is less expensive and the pressure on the grid is lower. And so we don't have to run the chiller during the day because what we do is we melt the ice during the day when we need air conditioning um, and we use that to cool the building. And we don't have to use our chiller during the day when the grid is being stressed by everyone else wanting air conditioning. So Jim, tell me about this garden. Where are we? We are on the roof of the new building, believe it or not. And this is a green roof. This is a very unique approach to maintaining constant temperatures in the building. Um, by having a green roof, we keep the building cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. Um, the other unique thing about this is, as you can see, we have to mow grass. And we didn't want to have to store gasoline up here because it's a hazardous flammable material. So we sought out a company that made a very good electric lawnmower and we mow the grass up here with an electric lawnmower. And that way we don't have to store any gasoline up here. And it's quiet and it doesn't disturb people when they're working. Um, and it, it's just a, a very unique approach to roof construction. Jim, what are we behind us? Behind us is the, uh, is the meadow as a part of our 102 acres of, of property here. And what we did this year was working with the Triskelis Foundation and One Village, One Farm. These are nonprofit organizations. We agreed to put in an organic garden. We have enough room. So we put in a 100 by 50 organic garden with 22 raised beds. And we'll donate the food at the end of this year to all the local food banks. We expect to produce hundreds of pounds of produce in this garden. Um, and all working organic. with all organic. Right, no, no, no uh, pesticides or anything like that. All natural uh, uh, ingredients to keep the bugs off. And then there's a six foot deer fence around it because we have a lot of deer on the property and the garden would just get eaten to nothing. So we put a fence around it to protect it from the deer. Okay. So we're doing cucumbers, summer squash, tomatoes, and peppers. And then we'll have a fall planting as well. Um, and all of that food will go to the local food banks. We have 80 volunteers that uh, have volunteered to take care of the garden. So we have plenty of people to take care of it, um, and it's going to work out really, really well, and it's another sustainable aspect of the property. We also have two beehives on the property as well. We have a beekeeper that works for SAP, and he had asked us if he could put beehives on the, on the uh, property, and we agreed to do that because we felt that that was another sustainable issue in terms of, of, of uh, pollinating and, and protecting the bees. Uh, there has been a, a degeneration of bee colonies around the world, and so having good bee colonies is very important um, to, to the propagation of, of all the different plant life that we have on the campus. So we decided to put the beehives here as well. So what are we behind us here, Jim? Okay, what you see behind us here is a 60,000 gallon cistern buried in the ground and we collect our rainwater in that cistern. And then we use the rainwater for irrigation and flushing toilets, what, you know, what they call brown water or gray what, water. Gray water. And, um, and with all the rain that we've had, it's full. <laughs> but it, it, it's a, an, another way for us to get lead points, but it was, it's also a better way to manage our water consumption on campus because we can use that rainwater to irrigate. We have a beautiful courtyard in between the two buildings, and we irrigate that with that water. We also irrigate the green roof that you've seen with the cistern water. Okay. So it all goes into that 2 million, savings of, uh, 2 million gallons of savings of water per year. So why are we standing beside this artwork, Jim? Um, this is a, a part of our social sustainability program where we work with local nonprofits to do certain things. In this particular case, we work with a, a nonprofit called Fresh Artists. These are young children. These are not adults. These are children who have painted this artwork that you see behind you. We make a donation, substantial donation, to Fresh Artists so they can buy supplies and easels and paints and brushes for their children and then we in turn purchase their artwork to hang in this building. It's a dashboard right. and it tells you the consumption of electricity in this building, mm -hmm. the consumption of electricity in the other building, 
and it tells me what my PUE is in my data center, which is a... I know PUE. Okay, you know what that is. Yeah. So it, 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 it tells me how we're, we're operating, whether there's some kind of anomaly, we're using more electricity than usual. We can get a, just a quick glimpse of, of how the building is functioning and what its consumption rates are in right. both buildings. But then they go far beyond that and they can drill down to an individual air handler right to the motor and right. determine if it's running, how fast it's running, how much power it's using. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it, it gets right, we monitor over 10,000 points right. of information, of data on all the systems in the building.